David Rissling came to Davis in the late 1960s as the second faculty member in Native American studies. He talks of his youth on the Hooper Reservation and his philosophy for maintaining connections to his culture. Thank you. Uh, what's your background that led up to your position at UC Davis? Well, first, I, I was born on the Indian Reservation up in Northern California in, in 1921. And, uh, and when I got to be about five or six years old, we had moved from the place that we lived up to the Hoopa Indian Reservation where they had an Indian boarding school. The Indian children all had to go to the boarding school. <coughs> and then, then uh, we had started a high school there, which my dad was responsible for. So I went to school there and I graduated in 1939. And at which time my dad suggested that I go to college because we had learned something about Indian people. Very few Indian people went to college. As a matter of fact, they always taught the Indians to just be good workers and get them out of the eighth grade and that'd be something. My dad didn't agree with that, so he said I should go off to college. And if you go off to college, you better not come home if you don't remember who we are and, and that you're there to learn about the dominant society because you, you know our society very well. So you were approached by UC Davis yes. uh, to come here and be a visiting lecturer Yes. In Native on teaching Native American studies right. topics. Right. And that's mainly because when I'm uh, responsible for creating these organizations, Native American Rights Fund, California Legal Services, and Indian Education and everything. And I was still working down in, down in the Bay Area, and we were working with uh, besides all of, all of this, I've been on my own. Besides mm -hmm. doing all the things in, in the school, approached you for here from here in Davis. Well, uh, I had been working with Jack Forbes and got him up here before he came up here. I was, we were working on the Bay Area to start these programs down there. So Forbes, they offered him a high-paying job. In the here, year, no, down at, uh, at Berkeley. At Berkeley, mm -hmm. at, at a very high position. But I told him that we in, of the Indian people, we want you to be up at Davis because Davis is not in the city and, they, and you're not going to get a lot of Indian people going there <coughs> except those that are already adjusted to the cities. But we want to have a program that our Indian people would uh, enjoy and, and something that would be good for everybody in general, not only Native people, but everybody else. So uh, he finally said, okay, so he came up here and joined the, uh, the Native American development program that was starting up here. And the first thing he did was try to get me to come up here. When he moved up here, he wanted me to come up here. But I didn't get up here until, I guess, uh, about the uh, second, two-thirds of the, the year of that particular time. But it was still in the first that's the first year, year. right? Mm -hmm. And and I, I think it's important um, um, that you really you're one of the founders. You and Jack are, are two right. of the founders That's of right. the Native American Studies program here at UC Davis. Right. Everybody didn't wanted me to stay after the first part of it, and the students began to come in. And they began to feel good about themselves. So it was just the next year we got a lot of Indian students here from around the country mostly from California, but they were even coming from on the country. And because they felt that for the first time we had Indian instructor and somebody that knew about them and the fact that they lived a different life and that uh, my approach was always you have to live in two worlds. You have to live in the dominant society, you have to know how they work, and you have to know how your people work. So you have to go back and forth. And that's what I do and that's what I did most of that time, and, and I've been very successful. I have a list here, just for example, it's about 20 or 30 pages long of various things that I've been contacted with and leaders of throughout the United States, and I'm still doing it yet. I retired in 91, and, and I'm still... I think they're more active, <laughs> more active internationally than, anyway, yeah. and now <laughs> nationally and internationally right, than you were. International. How do you see UC Davis now as compared to when you came here? Well, I think that Davis can be really proud 
because Davis has come a long, long ways. And uh, I think the fact that you now have a graduate program for advanced gradu graduate program here, and I've seen all of the other minority groups coming into this university, and that we have not only them, but we have a large population of the regular uh, uh, regular people of uh, America coming mm -hmm. to Davis. And Davis is really, I, I look to Davis in another 10 or 15 years to be the number one college in the country.